I never thought I would have to actually make a video uh, where I would have to explain that I saw two reptilians. That I did not account for. Now I've got to hand it to Chris Constantine. That has to be one of the best opening lines of any video I've ever seen. It just makes you want to learn more, doesn't it? And so we've got these counterfeit humans living amongst us who are the tares, okay, which are basically mini-me uh, Nephilim, and none of us can tell the difference. Hold on, Chris. I just have to say to anybody out there that if you haven't heard the old I saw someone turn into a reptile kind of story, then you've never spent a Friday evening in a London pub. So let's listen to Chris's story in a more fitting environment down the local boozer. There you go, Chris. A pint of bitter and a packet of crisps. Now, what did I see? Well, I was just coming round the corner in a car. Down a frog and toad. I was coming round the corner and I saw a guy standing outside of an office. Okay, he was almost a bit more like, you know, he was kind of into the road, and that's what I was looking at him. I was looking at him, and then he had a fox fur collar. Bloody foreigner. Um, it looked. Well, the camp, should we say. And, poofed up. Um, and I looked at him and I, for a moment I thought he was a clown or something because his face and his hair were the same colour and pattern as, uh, as this fox fur collar. Diabolical bloody liberty. And my eyes just zeroed in on him and I, and I thought, you thought, what? Hey, what's going is, on? Is this a reflection? Is, this, is, he, is, he, is he painting his face? What, what, what's going on? But it couldn't account for the hair. Of course not. Of course. And I kept my eyes right on him as I went right up to him um, and then passed. It stayed the same. It wasn't a shadow. The sun wasn't shining on it. It couldn't have been a reflection. I hadn't gone bonkers because everything was normal. Give you the arsehole, didn't it? I wasn't stressed out. Nothing. No, I didn't give you the arsehole. I thought it must have been a reflection and I left it at that. However, the same evening, uh, several miles away, I saw the same thing again. Hold on, Chris. Just got to go for a Jimmy Riddle. We'll get back to Chris's encounter with the reptile people later. Meantime, let's go to our next worthy nominee. What we're going to see is a giant human skeleton found somewhere in South America. Little was said about it, according to my ghetto gospel, and it was whisked away to a forgotten storage bin... somewhere. Well, all I can say is that this isn't any part of South America I'm familiar with, judging from the style of dress. And somewhere in South America is not a very convincing source. But we do know that giant skeletons have been dug up with extraordinary frequency. They have their picture taken and then we never see them again because apparently they get whisked away to forgotten storage bins. But one thing they all have in common is a complete lack of a detailed source, where the photos came from and where they were published. Without a source, even a fake one, the authenticity of the photo can't be checked. So that should be an obvious sign that the photo may have been photoshopped. But every now and again a hoaxer slips up. This fake photo was the perfect hoax and even made it into a newspaper, the Hindu voice. Unfortunately, the hoaxers were silly enough to break the first rule of hoaxing, never give a source, and they claimed the photo was published in National Geographic. Now that's very easy to check. It turns out it wasn't, and the editors at National Geographic were so fed up with being asked about this that they tracked down the real source of the photo, a Photoshop competition held by a website called Worth 1000. If you're not convinced, here's the website showing the same photo winning third place in the competition. And if you're still not convinced, here's the photo again, and here's the original, which was doctored. It's an excavation of a mastodon in New York State. These photos also look pretty convincing, but an astute sceptic who runs this website noticed that both skulls had the same tooth missing and appeared to be the same skull. So I decided to check by superimposing one skull over the other. And sure enough, they are identical. So here are two hoaxes for the price of one. Both of these dead giants have been photoshopped. So, sorry, but these photos don't prove that giants rule the earth, as the Bible says, they show that gullible idiots rule the internet, and if your belief in the Bible is based on a few obviously photoshopped pictures, then it's about as shallow as this phony grave. The only other evidence the video shows us is this femur from a dead giant, and this fossilised giant. But unfortunately, my ghetto gospel once again makes the mistake of showing a source. And when the picture is tracked down at the Mount Blanco Fossil Museum, it turns out not to be the femur of a giant. It says so in the caption, this is just a model of a femur of a giant, 
made by the director of the museum, which is about as much proof of real giants as this plastic gnome is proof of real gnomes. As for the fossilised giant, it turns out this photograph comes from Strand magazine in 1895. According to the magazine, the supposed fossil was part of a travelling freak show and sixpence was charged to see it. Frankly, it's easier to believe Chris's story about people turning into reptiles. Talking of which... I saw a guy walking up the road and he had, he had a hoodie and he put the hoodie up. So this time I couldn't see his hair. And this was the evening this time. So no chance of any reflections. Who's not? And he's hoodie up, he's walking along, and he had a green shirt on, green pattern shirt. I could see it there. And would you believe it? His face had taken on the same pattern as his shirt. Do as what? This uh, Jenna Bush uh, still shows that her face is taking on um, the pattern Sorry, Chris, we're going to have to take a break again from your long story. Now, I always love videos that tell you they're going to disprove one of the most solid theories in science, backed by a mountain of evidence, in less than five or ten minutes. This guy's even more ambitious, claiming to be able to debunk all this evidence in less than three minutes. You just know that what follows will be crap. The genes are transferred from one generation to another. These produce an organism's inherited traits. In other words, the genes and DNA, they store the design characteristics of a creature, like its shape. It passes on from one generation to another. So if changes occur in a certain generation, the genes and the DNA, they are responsible for passing this information to another generation. Oh, sorry, I misjudged you. This is actually a very clear explanation as to how genetic traits are passed on. This guy doesn't deserve to be a Golden Crocodile nominee. Point number two. Let's see whether this is correct or false. Oh, crap. Look, heredity is even better understood than evolution. Even creationists accept it. And dogs produce dogs. You might get a big dog or a little dog. It might have straight hair, it might have curly hair, but it's a dog every time. This is because genes are passed on. Offspring resemble their parents. If they didn't, you wouldn't look the way you do. I mean, it's obvious you had no choice in the matter. So when you say this can't possibly happen, I don't care how fancy or complicated your explanation is, the fact is that it does happen. But let's hear the fancy and complicated explanation anyway. So as you can see in the middle, we have millions and millions of collagen proteins outside of the cell. And they are no longer under the control of the genes and the DNA. So the big question, how do these millions and millions of proteins know to arrange themselves in the perfect order of the human hand, as you can see on the right. Well, of course, chemicals never know anything. They simply follow chemical laws. And collagen proteins follow these laws too. All I can suggest, Saeed, is that if you want to know how something works in biology, look at the research and find out. And if your question hasn't been answered yet, wait until it is. I found a number of research papers on how collagen fibrils are formed. These are the long chain bundles that make up the basic structure of the hand. If you think this biochemistry is impossible and that somehow the collagens have to be moved into place by an intelligent designer, then all I can say is that either the intelligent designer is very sloppy or he's disturbingly malicious. I'm not going to give a lecture on this because it's not my field, but one thing I can explain is that genetic traits do indeed get passed on. Insects that bore through the wooden stories of houses, for example, pass on their physiology and their behaviour to future generations of insects that bore through wooden stories. And talking of boring stories... <laughs> This is a bit um, tricky to talk about. I like doing my bloody head. It's tricky to believe, but let's wait. These people are subhuman and God has called them serpents. A serpent is not necessarily just a snake, it can be a lizard type creature. Is there any lizard type creature that can do this? Yes, there is, and here he is, the chameleon. Now, bringing all of this Speak up, Chris down here. to earth. Okay. If, you look at um, my bird, what you look at? The following things. You look at my bird, what do you look Oh dear, as usual, Friday night at the Dog and Duck has descended into an anarchic punch-up thanks to the arrival of the Chelsea Shed Boys. 
Sorry, Chris, I'm afraid the explanation of these reptile people will have to wait for another night. But voters for the coveted golden crocodile can make up their minds now. Do you Adam and Eve it, or is Chris telling porky pies? We report, you decide. Well, I met with my job. I work for UNICEF, which is an amazing organization that works in over 150 countries. And my job was to meet with teenagers who were living in exclusion, who were living in extreme poverty and living with HIV and write their stories. Listen to their stories and write them for UNICEF. And so, I mean, I have Reptilicus, a monstrous, massive beast whose astounding appearance causes panic. Reptilicus approaching the city. Repeat. 